It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for another mini tutorial, which we're going to go through a week of tutorials. Remember guys, if you have a suggestion for a guide, a tutorial, or any kind of game mechanic that you want explaining, please drop it in the comment below and I will see it, and I will hopefully make a video on it. Maybe, possibly, kind of. Also remember to like this video right now. Right now. Like it. Go. Okay, today's video is going to be about battle planning. It seems to be a question that crops up quite often that seems to be no videos on YouTube of people explaining just how the battle planning mechanic work in Hearts of Iron 4. So I thought I'd make a video on it, so make you guys uh, up to date on how to do your battle planning. So first of all, I'm going to select all my divisions, and I'm going to right click at the very bottom, and that will assign them all to a general, as you can see here. New general, Mr. Silhouette. So, what we're going to do first of all is just go through the buttons first of all. So we're going to talk about the naval invasion order so in this case i'm going to select this one division I'm going to assign them to a brand new army here each one of these are armies uh, left click on the naval invasion order you need to select a port which one's the highlighted and then you say where you want the naval invasion to go to so in this case we'd want to go to for instance here so it shows you the route that it will take and what sea regions it will go through before it lands now, what are the qualifying factors to make a naval invasion? One, it requires planning. As it says here, it needs to be of three reserve convoys and a seven days of planning for this one division. The more divisions that you assign, the longer the planning will take, no matter the size of the divisions. So what that will mean is when the order is complete and ready and planned, the three reserved convoys, you will activate the plan and you will leave here and you will attempt to do an invasion of this province. What you will need to make the invasion go is you will need naval supremacy. Which means, if you go naval map mode, you can see the north, eastern North Sea here needs to have naval supremacy. 0%. And also here as well. Now, actually, off the top of the head, I'm not actually sure what the number is of naval supremacy. I think it might be about 75%, something like that. It is a very, very high number. These sea regions cannot be contested. You must have full control of them before you can launch the amphibious assault. But that's pretty much it. That's the one. And in this case, you could plan further invasions from different provinces as well. Um, every time you do a new another invasion, it has to be from a different port. And you have to uh, individually assign divisions. One thing that usually happens, it's usually a bit of a bug. You can unassign the divisions and then with this button. And then you can edit mode and then assign them. Actually, it's not edit mode. Usually what I do is I use the alt key. Let me just do this now. Yeah, it's the control key. I'm not sure which one of these buttons is the control key. I think it might be the edit. But as you can see, as you hold down control and you hover over the order, it has a plus sign with a man on it. And you can see it changes from one division assigned, depending on what you're doing. It At the moment, at the start of the game, you are limited to a maximum of 10 divisions to be sent on a naval invasion order. So just be aware of that. You can't assign more than 10 in one go. You can plan many invasions, but you can only assign 10 in one go and then when those 10 are complete then you can assign them onto another order etc etc the next one is going to be paratrooping so we'll select this one paratrooper division assign them to a new army and it goes paratroop order so as you see here it selects all the air bases and they've got one here that is in a lovely um aqua blue which is the one that has got some transport planes in it you'd select that one and it shows you all the areas from this region that you can paratroop into so for instance if you want to do an absolutely ballsy berlin to Alsace landing there you go you can do it yet again what are the qualifying factors for this you need to have air supremacy in all the bordering regions so that means it have to be this one this one this one and this one the qualifying factors are a lot higher I think yet again it is about 75% 80% air supremacy so that means you assign planes to those regions and that means it will add up to air supremacy based upon these regions and obviously it makes sense you need to uh, drop the troops to where you need them to be does that not sound i don't, I don't know okay all right the next one is front line uh this is a hotkey that you'll need to learn so i'm going to assign it to Z. so in this case we're going to select all the troops that are on the polish front here assign them to a new army and you can either select here or you can type press Z. it just highlights all the possible front lines and you click it here. So this is the front line because this is a puppet of Slovakia. <clears throat> you can see all this border here is a potential front line. Pretty simple, really. 
And you can see there's multiple front lines you can assign to different areas. As you can see, as I'm assigning more front lines, the troops aren't automatically assigned. It says no divisions assigned. It's because you have to manually use the control click again and assign them to move that 52. And you got here, you can move them back here to 52 again. There you go. Remember the hotkey for this is Z. It's a really good idea to remember that. Z, Z, and that'll make it a lot easier to plan your orders. One other thing to remember as well is delete order. You can individual click here and delete the ones you don't want. Not that it's relevant, but be aware that when this order is complete and fully executed, they will go to another order that you've already assigned, so they might break off and go into random places. So it is a good idea to go on here, right-click, and delete all orders every now and then, because otherwise you're going to have your troops going off on random directions and whatnot. So remember, Army, Z, Frontline. The next one is Offensive Order, which is X, another one you really, 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 really want to remember. You press X, and then you can draw a Frontline, and you can see the arrow where it's coming from. One of the questions people ask me quite often is, what if you've got multiple front lines? So Z, another front line here on Eastern Prussia, and you want to sign another front line. It's like, that's not what I wanted. I don't want to go from here to here. I wanted an order where it goes here to here. It's pretty easy. You just click on the edit button, and then you can just drag it over where you want it to go. Um, and as I said, in this case, you can assign the orders and what, what arrows you want them to go. You probably think to yourself, this is all just arrows. It's just cosmetic. It's not cosmetic. The AI will try and execute this plan. See, as you can see, they're slowly pushing forward, and the spearhead is directly in the center as they're moving more and more forward, as you can see. Highlight over it, by the way, to see the order as it's being executed to get an idea of what actually is happening. Uh, if you want to be mad on battle planning, you might want to make little, little borders as such, little front lines to move to and assign multiple fronts. You can be as complex with this as you want to be, but it usually requires a little bit of micro for you as the player to kind of uh, make sure this is nice and refined and whatnot. Because there's always instances in particular multiplayer games where if you use the battle plans, um, you might get encircled from behind. Also, there's a Blitz Spearhead order. This was added in together for victory. It's called the Blitz order, and they changed it to Spearhead, which makes sense because it's more universal now. And it's just similar to the Offensive order, but it's a more of a narrow Spearhead. In this case, it's probably not too relevant. No, it doesn't show the actual attack. In most cases, you'll assign this not to a full front line, but you'll assign it to a smaller front line. Anyway, just to give you an example I forgot about, if you want a smaller army, so let's just select a few troops on the back, make a new army. You can make a front line that's a small one. So you could right click here and make a small one. If you just right click on one spot, it makes the full front line for the whole front. But if you make a small one, you can drag a small front line here. And then you can assign a front line to go on a blitz order directly to Warsaw. As you can see, that's the, that's the direction they will go. The next one is the fallback line. Now, the fallback line can be used in conjunction with a front line and offensive order to make a fallback line. It's something that I forget to do, and it's really, really worthwhile. So let's just say in some weird, hyper weird world where the Polish army is uh, really well equipped, and suddenly the Germans are a bit surprised, what you could do is select the, uh, the purple army here, have a fallback line behind the river here, and in the event that things just start going wrong and you need to pull back, what you can do is control click and assign them here and then they will all move back to that position as you can see there you go you you won't want to necessarily do this but you can you could what you could do oh, i just deleted the old orders didn't i whoops let's do that again um, all you guys in an army delete all orders for offensive front line and then Garrison order here And if you wanted to you don't you could just uh, everyone assigns here and just a few assign on the back row Just as a fallback line just if they try and punch through It's quite useful for instance as the Soviet Union to have a front line on Poland an offensive order And then a fallback line behind some of these big fat rivers here So if they do try and make a breakthrough with tanks They can't just encircle your whole army because they'll have to go over a river and over some reserve troops here Which will be very very tricky, but it won't be tricky. It won't be impossible, but it will delay them to a massive degree uh, the next one is the garrison order. This was updated in Together for Victory 2. Let me just select some of these troops here. Assign them to an army. Garrison order. So what garrison works is you select individual states and they get assigned to garrison those individual regions. It's quite pretty because you can paint the map with lovely garrisons. And here you set the priorities of where you want the troops to garrison as such. Now let's just say you're scared of invasion from the UK or France landing into Germany. In that case what you'll do is assign them to ports. 
and also assign them to the whole coastline. And it says how many troops are required to actually fulfill this order so every single region is covered. So in this case, all the naval bases, which is definitely required, all the coastlines. Or you could just say just the naval bases, which is six. In that case, let them go. And they will move and cover those regions. I feel like people don't use this well enough. I don't know. It's something that a lot of people seem to create four battle lines over the coast. And yeah, I'm not actually too sure about that, to be honest with you. I'd prefer to use a garrison and just select coastline. That's what I'd honestly prefer to do. So you could also assign that for air bases too, if you could get paratrops on top of. Also for lowering resistance, for instance, in Poland, for instance. Guarding bunkers, you could do that, for instance, in the uh, West Wall. And you've also got victory points to stop you. For instance, if you're playing as France, uh, Germany could power drop onto Paris or some of victory points and annex you really quickly. And in that case, having one troop on a victory point will defend that and uh, stop that from happening. I realize that control click is this button here. So if you did want to assign, let's say, this one division, you could control click here and that will join that army and join that order and you can also do the exact opposite and uh, move the orders here completely this has an exclamation mark that means this guy does not have any orders whatsoever um which i think in some instances that could be okay just if you're doing something else but i don't know i always like to assign an order to everyone just to make sure everyone's doing something as such and the edit button is what i showed before where you can drag and modify different bits of your orders for instance you can modify the front line you can modify the offensive order for instance just click it and drag it there's um i feel like this is not easy to to do what i'm doing right now it's something you're gonna have to play with and just mess around with to get an idea of how everything works as such really struggled for me for a long while to understand the offensive orders as such like why they're going here and whatnot and for instance, if I want another offensive order, I can do that if I want to. You know, it just requires lots of playing around and drawing little pretty shapes. It feels like MS Paint of front lines as such. But this is pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It basically just shows an outline of the battle plans. Remember, if you've got a comment for any kind of tutorial, mechanic, or guide, drop it below. And also, forget to don't forget to like the video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.